Hey guys, it's Agonzi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really, really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the Augmented Reality Racing game. I'm going to show you what you see playing behind the scenes, which I added a couple of features such as calculating the distance between the car and the target objects, changing the color material of the retycle depending on the distance between the car and the target objects. And I'm also going to show you a couple of things that we need to do as far as like reorganization in the code. I'm also really, really excited about the power of lighter, like knowing, you know, the awareness of the environment, what's happening in the environment, walking around and actually trying to beat the game is a really, really cool use case for using lighter. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so I'm going to start by showing you a couple of demos that I ran before starting to work on this video. So as you guys can see, I'm scanning the area and I tried to kind of create an environment where I had a lot of objects that we could collide with. So in this case, you know, I have a lamp, I'm placing the car. The red, you know, the red area that you see on the retycle, that designates that the car is now close, is basically too close from, from, the, from the retycle, which means that we need to place the retycle further away from the car. So that way we can create a mission where, you know, the environment is going to help us in beating, in beating the game. So in this case, you know, whenever, whenever it turns white, that means that the distance is sufficient, which means that we can, you know, we can place a sphere. And like I said on the previous video, at the beginning it's gonna be a sphere and then we're gonna make it a flag or, you know, anything that we wanted, we wanted, to, we wanted to make for this game. So as you guys can see, I have a couple more. So it's going to stop, you know, allowing us to place spheres as soon as we go through all the different items in the mission. So we'll just let it play for a little bit more. And now, you know, I'm ready to drive it. So I'm just gonna go in and go around. The other thing that I added as well was the racetracks. I wanted to, you know, I don't know. I wanted to make something cooler with the car because it was really boring just to see the car going around. I also, you know, added the speed of the car. And then, you know, as soon as the car collects all the spheres then we know that we, that we won. Here I'm doing, you know, doing retro and then I got a pull forward and then backward because it's really hard. I'm colliding with the, this is basically a little heater that I have. And I just keep colliding just so that you know that the mesh that is getting generated, you know, detected that there is a heater there. You guys can see I have one and then I want. Let me show you this other video as well. So this is on the way to my office. So I walk in to, towards it and I'm showing you the mesh here. So you, you know that it's, you know, detecting the environment, placing one mesh in there, which is our target object, and then doing another one. And then, so I'm gonna place another one right there and another one right there. At some point it's going to be, the distance is gonna be too, it's not gonna be enough, like, like you guys can see. I don't wanna place it on the wall because the car is not gonna be able to go to the wall. I can't place it there because there's an object in there. So what I decided to do is I turn around and I go back. And now I know that that one is 3.2 meters away, so I can place a target object at that point. So you guys can see, I'm gonna start driving, going around and make sure that I don't, I don't hit anything. And in this case, it didn't detect that because it's, it's, it's almost on the ground. So that pole, it's not, it's not enough for the lighter to, to detect where that is. But then, you know, I go around and then I won. So that's basically everything that we're going to be doing on today's video. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I need to make a couple of changes, right? So on the previous videos, I show you the car controller. We went through and also created what's called the missions. And then these are all the different objects that get instantiated as we're placing them on the, on the scene and basically doing a raycast on the mesh. But one of the things that we need to know is we need to know at what point we, we have placed the car. And the reason for that is because I don't want to, if the retycle, needs to change and calculate the distance between the car and the retycles. I only want to do it whenever I place the car. So we're going to have to change the logic in there. So I'm going to start by, by doing some coding. So we're going to go and open up the player mission manager. And for those of you who didn't watch the previous videos, make sure that you watch the previous videos because they're going to walk you through most of all the code that I have in here. If I miss something, that means that, you know, if I didn't cover it for some reason, let me know and I can make another video about it. So the first thing that I'm gonna say is I'm going to create a new, basically a new, a new property that is gonna tell me, okay, was the car placed or not? And if it was placed, then I know the retycle can start calculating the distance. So I'm just gonna do a property here. I'm just gonna do a get. And then I'm just gonna do return. 
And I have this object in here called a uh, current machine, and this already has the items and basically the state of the current machine. So I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna write a lambda here, and I'm gonna say in, just gonna designate I, this can be anything you like. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, okay, if the item type that I, I, I'm looking at right now is of type car, because this is basically an inventory item, so it has cars, it has you know all different flags that we have to capture. So I know that it has a car, but I don't know is if, it, if I place it or not. So what we can do here, we can look at the placement state, and then this is basically just an enum. And if this has been placed, then I know that the you know the car was actually was actually placed. The reason for this is because we're gonna use that on the like I was saying on the actual retycle. If we go to the retycle and you look at the, the coding here, we have an update method, it's doing a rate cast, we know when it hits, and then this is basically changing the position of the retycle. And if we have a hit, then we're gonna place the object as, as long as we touch on the mesh. So I'm gonna have to change the code here in order for us to, you know, to do that. Before we do that, I want to jump in to do a couple more things before we get into that, because I'm gonna have to change the state of the retycle as well, if it's red or white. Red means that we're not close enough, white means that we have basically the retycle is far enough away from the car. So I'm going to do a couple of things in here. I'm gonna go into create folder. This one is gonna be called scriptables. And what I'm gonna do is we have our missions in here and, I, and this one is a, a scriptable object as well. I'm gonna move missions to my scriptables because I'm gonna be creating another scriptable object. This one is gonna be called the global game settings. And the reason for that is because I want to start adding settings to this game. And for now, it's just gonna be the retycle materials. So I'm gonna say global game settings. Go ahead and save that. And it's gonna be another scriptable object. So let's go ahead and go back in and double click it to open it. It's gonna reload it. And this is gonna be inheriting from a scriptable object. And it's gonna have two different properties. One is going to be the available material and then the unavailable material but I want to actually change the menu here. It's gonna be file name. The file name of this one that we're gonna allow people to create through the menu, it's gonna be global game settings. And then I'm also going to have a menu name here. So it's gonna say menu, make sure that I do no comma there and inside, there we go. Menu name and there we go. And then on the menu name, I'm gonna say create games. We can say create global game settings or create game settings. I think it's it's sufficient. Okay, and then the other thing that I normally do, I just put in an order. So it's gonna say order zero. This is all where, where you want it in that menu. And it doesn't really matter, like this other one that I had in here. If we go into scriptables and I have my player missions, I probably should you know rearrange this because it's gonna be another scriptable, scriptable object. And I should probably just move these out as well. But anyways, this is gonna be order zero. The other one should probably be order one. That way we don't have them in the same order. I just do this one. And then at some point I'll move this one to scriptable. We can do it now so that we have everything organized. So player missions, I also need to change this object. I don't want this to be. So what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and create it. And then add a new item. This one's gonna be my player, my player item. And player item. Just want to make sure that we start, you know, cleaning things up. And then I'll just move this out. Go into my player item here, and double click it. Just wait until there we go. Then we're going to fast forward for this. Okay, so we have our player, our player mission. I also need to be bringing in a couple of namespaces. Let's go ahead and bring that in. I also need to do the same thing for game object. And looks like that it's good to go. And I don't need that space on the very top. All right, so we should have the player mission, which is going to be the scriptable object. Actually, this is going to be, okay, so I think I screwed up in here. Let me go ahead and do this, and then go into player item. Then my player mission is actually going to be this guy. So it looks like I had it, I had it correctly at the beginning. Okay, so we're gonna have player missions, then the player item, which is going to be this guy right here. And then we have our global game settings, so we can just, remove everything here that we're not using. So the two properties that we're gonna need here are gonna be material. It's gonna be available retycle material. And then I'll do the same thing, but for unavailable. Unavailable retycle material. So, so that we can change the state between 
between those two. I think that's everything that we need in there. Now, if we go into the game manager, we're going to have to hook it up, right? So I'm going to use the game manager as a, as a singleton that we can access the global game settings from. So I'm going to say singleton game manager, and then we can just be bringing in this in. I'm also going to be changing the, basically adding a property so that we can access it. So I'm just going to say private, and then it's going to be our global game settings, and then global game settings. Again, this is going to be a private, so we don't need to, but I'm going to be associating this through the inspector, so we're going to do that. I also want to be able to access it from outside from another class, so I'm just going to create a, a new property. And this is going to be a read-only property. So we'll just do again, and then I'll just say return this global settings. Okay, so that's going to be all of that. Then the next thing that I'm going to need is going to be, I need to make a couple of changes, so we're going to go into Unity. And we need to go into my scriptables here, and I also need to go and create my game settings. So if I do that, you're going to see that as soon as I do that, it's going to, it's going to create a game settings. And I didn't realize that those two were in there. I didn't want to do that, actually. So this is going to be assets. I want to put those on their scripts. So we can just do... So what I wanted to do is for scriptable, this is going to be the scriptable objects, the actual serialized objects that we're going to be using. And on their scripts, I want, basically, I want this to go on their scripts. So what I'm going to do is let's create another folder here, a scriptable, scriptable objects, if I can type that. And we can go ahead and go and grab these two guys and put them in here. And we can rearrange these, you know, later on if we, if we feel like there's a better place for those. Okay, so... So I have those that I created. I'm going to go into the scene that holds the... So this one, I use it for testing. So, but if we go into the main game, uh, gaming AR, then this is everything that we're going to use, you know, in, in a real game. So if we look at the game manager, right now it doesn't have a global settings, global game settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this. Now we have that associated. Now we can access it from other places. And then the materials, we're going to have to create a couple of materials in here. So I already have one that is going to be for the recycle and the, the default state. So it's going to be available, right? It's going to be available and it's going to be white whenever it's available. So what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to just clone it. And then this is going to be unavailable recycle. And this one, what I did is I made it red. So it's going to go ahead and turn that red. And then everything else should be okay. So now what I'm going to do is if we go back into our game manager or, or settings, we can go ahead and associate the available recycle here and also the unavailable retitle. So now that we have those materials that we can basically change the state on. So now what I need to do is there's a couple more things that I want to do. So I'm going to go into my prefabs. And if we look at the retitle right now, it basically just has, it just basically has this material. It doesn't, it doesn't really, also it doesn't give us any information about the distance, which is what I want to do. So if we go into AR object with stats, you're going to see that I have these stats with a speed. And in fact, I actually, oops, let me go ahead and do that. I'm actually going to change this because the, the, the actual placement of this. So if I go ahead and put, let's say that I'm going, you know, 100 miles per hour, the, the numbers are basically at 180 degrees. I want to change that to be that way. That way, if we're driving forward, then I can see the numbers correctly. There was one change that I wanted to make there. The other change that I also want to make, I'm going to copy this. And we're going to go into my retitle game object. And I'm going to go ahead and place it inside. And if you notice, it's, it's really hard to, there we go, it's really hard to see. Okay, let's go ahead and, there we go. So what I want to do as well, I'm going to change the Y position. I also want to change the rotation now. Because the rotation of this right now, if we get closer, yeah, so I want to do, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do 80 on X. And I'm also going to offset it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. And I'm actually going to, there we go. So let's go ahead and do 180 here and then 80 there. I think that's what I, what I did before. And that should, that way when we're placing it, we know, you know, what the size is. And then what I'm going to do is I also need to change if you look at stats, it's a canvas, so I need to make it, let's go ahead and make this canvas a little bit bigger, so we have more real estate. 
And then I'm also going to go into the, the actual label. I'm going to make this bigger. I'm also going to go ahead and resize this a little bit, maximize it. And then we can just go ahead and zero, zero, and then zero, zero. That way it's going to, you know, stretch all the way across. Now we can just go ahead and remove this. So I don't want to have a default, you know, a default, uh, it's going to be the distance, default distance. Okay, so that, now that we have that, we're going to have to, so one thing that we need to do is we need to change the, the actual text box, right, of the value that we're going to be putting in the distance. So we need to go ahead and go back into here. And we're gonna get we're gonna go into our AR placement retycle. And there's nothing in here yet that we we have coded to to change you know the state of the retycle. So what I'm gonna do here is we need to first determine if the car has been placed, and that's the first thing that we did at the very beginning. So I'm gonna say, okay, give me the instance. I'm gonna say, okay, as long as the car has been placed, then I'm gonna do that. If the car has not been placed, I'm gonna allow the retycle to place the car which is what these cells is going to do. So now that we have that, I also need to calculate the, the distance, but we don't have a text box in here, so I'm gonna have to add that text box. So we're gonna do private, and I always have a, a hard time remembering the, the class name of this, and I don't know what they name it so badly, but anyways. And then this is gonna be retycle overlay text. There we go. And the name, the name of the class always throws me off. Just gonna go ahead and bring it in. All right, so now that we have that, we should be able to change the, the distance of the car. And then basically of the retycle that, that it will show. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be calculating distance. The distance we're gonna be calculated by using vector three. We're gonna say distance. And then I'm just gonna get an instance of the car controller, which I don't think I've made it an in, a singleton yet. So we're gonna have to do that because I'm always going to have just one car at a time. So we can just say singleton and then car controller. And we can just be bringing in our singleton here. There we go. So what I need to do is I need to access and say, okay, what is your current position right now? Because we're gonna have to detect what the current position is. You know, that what's the difference between the car position and that retycle that we're trying to place. So to do that, I need to get transform and then I need to get the parent and then the local position. And I'm also going to need to get the position of the current retycle, which is this, this instance. And the reason why I'm doing get child local position is because this object and this object are going to be at the same relative position in their pairing game objects. It's a little confusing, but it actually works really well. So just trust me, it's gonna work and it actually works because I already tested it, right? <laughs> so. That's going to give us the difference between those two. And now what we need to do is we need to say, okay, now that I know the distance, we need to place, we need to basically put that distance on a, on a label on our text box. And it's gonna be using a little formattering here and I'm gonna say zero and then zero point and we're gonna be using a number. And there we go. And now that we have that, I need to close it here and I need to be passing in the value, which is going to be our distance and then semicolon at the end. Okay, so now we have the distance. We also have the, the distance put on our text box. Now what I need to do is I need to, okay, now I need to use that distance and I need to check, okay, if the distance is greater than or minimum distance on this current place object, then I know that the, the material is going to be white and I'm also going to be allowing per, the person to place the, the current object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, place object and I'm gonna say player item because this has a reference on of the inventory item. And then I also need to get, you know, the minimum distance. And I'm gonna show you how we need to set that as well. So now that I have that, I'm gonna say, okay, give me the component in the children of this, of this current game object. And the, the game object that I'm gonna get is gonna be mesh render. And that way we can change the material, right? We're gonna say, give me the material. And remember we have the, the global settings. So I'm gonna say game manager. And then I'm gonna say instance, because that's our singleton. I'm gonna grab my global game settings, and then this is gonna be my available material. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow you know, somebody to place that game object because it is within the, the threshold between the minimum distance and the distance of the two objects. Okay, so we're good to go here. So this should allow us to place the basically the next target object 
and then it's going to change the material of the retycle. But we also need to tell people that they're not within the distance and otherwise they're going to keep pressing and pressing and they can't really place anything. So we need to tell them that it's going to be unavailable and it's going to be a visual cue, right? It's going to be, the material is going to be, is going to be red. So if it's red, then we know that we can place it. It looks like I have a typo here. Let's go ahead and play and remove an extra A. You probably saw that all along and were laughing at me. <laughs> but anyways, that it's everything that we need to do there. The other thing that I want to do is I think I might have lost a reference to the material because I rename it. So, yep, I did. And if I go, it's kind of crazy how you capture all those little things. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and go back here. Okay, so we have emissions and remember I put them under the descriptable objects. And if we go here, we have this player emission, but I haven't really set the minimum distance on any of them. So what I need to do is if you look at this value here, I have a minimum distance. So what this is going to allow me to do is say, well, within the car, it doesn't really make sense. This, this is not even being used. But if we have a flag, what I'm, what I'm doing in the code is I'm saying, okay, I place this car. What is the distance between the car and this flag? And then I'm going to be doing the same thing with, you know, what is the distance between this car and this other flag? So I think what I'm going to do is for this one, we'll just do one meter away. We can say 1.5 meters away. We can say 0.5. So this will allow the designer, the level designer, to, to play with these numbers. We can do that. And then we can say, okay, this one is going to be two meters away. Or we can even go crazy and say it's going to be three meters away from the car. That way we, can, we have some variety. And we can have more things. Right now it can be a flag. In the future it can be a ramp. It can have altitude. It can have, you know, there's just so many different use cases that I want to do. But for now we'll just, we'll just keep it simple. And that I think should cover everything. Let me go ahead and just give you a walkthrough of what we did. We went through the retycle. We added the retycle overlay text, which is going to tell us the distance, you know, that the car is from the flags. We also changed the update method to only allow us to place an object as long as the car has been placed. Otherwise, if the car hasn't been placed, we're going to allow them to place the car itself. And then we also calculated the distance. And then we changed the, basically the state of the retycle material if we are within that distance. And then if we are, it's going to be red. If, we, if we're not, it's going to be, basically it's going to be white. The other things that we did too is we did some rearrangement. We have the scriptable objects now folder, which has our global settings, which is going to, you know, it's going to keep track of the available material, available material, unavailable material. And we also may, made a change to move player emissions because it's another scriptable object. For now, just to keep things, you know, clean. And the last thing that we also did, we also make this a singleton so that we could access it. And I also did the same thing on the car manager so that we could access it from, you know, from, from anywhere. The, the other things that we also do is we went into and created the two materials. And then lastly, we also made a change so that we can store the, the global settings within the game manager. And also on the car itself, we made one change. If I go into our car, with, oh, and that's the other thing that I needed to make before I forget. And, and yes, there's a lot of things that I'm doing. And trust me, this is going to be helpful because it's going to make a lot more sense. So this one, I'm using the air object. I think the one that I wanted to use. And if I go into my prefabs here, it's going to be the air object with stats. The reason for that is because this has an overlay of the speed. And I'm also going to remove that because I don't want that. And that's going to be everything that we need to do, guys. So if you guys have any questions about this, please let me know. And for those of you who are in Patreon, this code is already available in Patreon. So make sure that you access it. I actually can show you. So make sure that you go into Dilmer V AR Racing Game and go into this branch, which is called Feature Missions. And you can see that I have three commits that I made last night. So I added, I added the minimum distance requirement. I also added a couple more ramps to a test scene. And then just basically a few changes that I that I had to do to make this look a lot better and function a lot better. So I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.